Go Brent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to Slack chat. No, this isn't Slack chat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Slack Worm podcast. This, my name is Brent and here with me is Stuart. We're going to talk about merging updates into Slack where arm. I can't, I don't know, man. <laughs> Please do it. <laughs> don't give me crap. I've been awake all night. <laughs> just get all rid right. of that recording and start over and you do it. I think that's just like too good to not, not include. <laughs> <laughs> you what? I think it's too good to not include. <laughs> oh, God. You can save it and put it at the beginning and then say, okay, now we're doing it for real. And then you say it. <laughs> oh, right. I, I think you should include the whole thing. You know, this is, this, is how it, this is how it goes, you know. <laughs> it's episode 1998. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Like that isn't it? All right. I'll, I'll, do the, <laughs> I'll do the introduction, friend. <laughs> Okay. Usually I'd just sit here and wait for you to do it so I can forget yeah. it and then <laughs> Well well to be fair, on many of the previous episodes, particularly on the earlier ones, I did it wrong so many times. <laughs> in, in the end in the end I just kind of got it down pat because I'd done it so yeah. often. But I usually just trip over my words and then forget what I was talking about. And then uh yeah, that so yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll I'll gather my composure, and uh, let, let's begin. <laughs> I'm still going to include the previous stuff though, because I think it's funny. Is it still recording? Yeah, I hope so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, um, hello and welcome to the Slack Wear Arm vlog. In this episode, Brent is going to be taking the reins and updating Slack Wear Arm incorporating the latest batch of updates from the parent project Slackware x86 and uh, Brent was uh, started doing that already using the Slackware arm build system tool set and um, I don't know how far he's got but it looks like something broke because he showed me something on the screen earlier oh my goodness what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> what is this oh this is okay so right that's, okay so that's the tool right so Okay, so yeah, so I'm having a, I've, um, I'm having a break from uh, working on Slackware Arm for a bit, and um, so Brent's taking over, and uh, he's, um, uh, as I said, he's been using the tool set, uh, and uh, he's been merging in the the updates, and um, so so what's happened, Brent? What's going on? I don't want that. I'm basically just trying to merge in updates and I'm learning how to use uh, the scripts that you wrote, basically. So cool. Yeah. All right. So basically what I did, one of the during the uh, when I was still working on Slackware 32, Slackware ARM 32 bit for a huge amount for, for probably about three or four years, the entire project for me was not Slackware. It was the, it was the actual build system. So I, instead of doing everything manually, uh, I wrote an extensive set of tooling to basically manage the update process and the build process of the ARM port of Slackware uh, to such an extent that most of it, well, actually, you know what, probably 98% probably of the cases it's completely or it's almost completely automated apart from the merging in of patches uh, or, or any changes actually from the x86 build uh, from the x86 source tree but in most cases unless there's any patches it's it is automated uh there's still some bugs in it though <laughs> but, but uh, you know <laughs> but anyway uh but in most cases it's, it's it, it is so brent's got access to those tool uh, to that set of tools and um you have began the process of merging in the updates. So the only thing is, I didn't give you the script that actually pulls the <laughs> the the, um, the, uh, the change log from 
the Slackware server, but I guess you don't. Press it. What, what was it called? Oh, you don't have that at all, actually. Oh no, you do. But um, th let's not look at that I because have lots that's of stuff, um, but... that's that's private information in there, so you can't show that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. It's in there. You can see it because you've got access to the same server as I do. But the uh, there's a bunch of different stuff in there that we uh, we would not be allowed to, to show. So, okay, just show me the change log. Um, that you, the, the one you're working with, I mean. Uh, Let me see whether it makes any sense. It should be fine, but let's let's see. Oh, it's so this fine. This one failed because it. I think those packages need to be added. But okay. So what you do? So the so okay. So I'll show you the first thing you can do. Assuming you've got it set up like I do, I've got no idea what you've got set up. But if you run the tool R2B fails, then it should show you the build failures. Um. Oh, I don't have that one on here. I saw it though. Or wait. All it does is it looks at the um, yeah, it's in the distro tools. It just looks at the uh, the R2B build tool log and then opens up the um, what do you call it? The uh, build log for the failed packages. Pretty much, uh, it just it just makes it easier, really. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Oh. The reason, okay, right. So if the, okay, the, when, okay, the bottom one, um, the reason why that's broken is because if you look in, so, okay, so if you, it could even be that libproxy is broken because the LKD soap isn't built. So yeah. the, the reason why it's not built is if you look in the, uh, arm slash build script for the KD soap package. What you'll find is that most likely find anyway is that the it, it has a dependency that's now absent has been removed from Slackware and it failed to install it and and it bailed out and it doesn't tell you that because that <laughs> I don't I don't because I don't need to I didn't need to know that because I built the system so I know what it means when there's no build log. But basically, yeah. if you open up. Open up the ARM build script, you'll find there's some dependency information in there. And you need to rip that dependency information out because I'm not using it anymore. I don't, I'm not maintaining any of that. It's pointless. It made sense in the olden days. What? Oh, I put root toys. <clears throat> but it doesn't make sense anymore. So if you go to, yeah, source slash L slash KD soap and, and then edit the ARM slash build script. And you'll probably find a bunch of depths in there. Yeah. So what I would do is oh, that's an older build uh, template. Yeah. So delete everything where it says specific build dependencies. Just delete the lot. All this. Yeah. Don't need any of that. There'll be there's probably everything. something there'll be something in there that's been removed from Slack where I don't know what it is. Just looking at it. But that's probably what it is. So if you save that and then run it again, it, the KD soap will probably build. And then you might find lib proxy builds as well. Okay. So I don't, just R2B what, then, right? Uh, yeah. What I normally do though is I move the broken one to the top in the list so that it builds first. Ah. And then and then build lib proxy first as well. Uh, sorry, build lib proxy second. So move that to the second in the list. Okay, so we don't need any of this here. I don't know what I don't know what requ what requires those Python packages. Have you actually added those packages in? Have you set the builds? No, I haven't. That's what I was going to do next. Okay. So yeah, I can probably delete this failed thing right in the CL. Yeah, you know, that's just a, yeah, that's just informational. So if yeah, if you move um. um you shouldn't actually need the plus symbols. They're just from the diff output from the, the change log. Oh. I, can't, <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. If you what you don't, if you just put the package name itself, for example, if you just put L slash KD soap, it'll build it regardless. It doesn't care about any of anything else. Um, okay. Uh, you, you, but just move the actual line because ordinarily, I, 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 yeah, yeah, just cut it and move it to the top, and then move the missing what whatever the other one was was it something proxy or something kd oh lib proxy that was the other one yeah it's right there 
Was uh, it? Yeah, because that's the only one that failed, you see. Yeah. Let's see. So put that after KD soap. There we go. I probably put it immediately. I, that's right. So then just save that list. <clears throat> and then just R2B. <laughs> we can just do that, actually. That's all you need to do. Man. Yeah, I didn't know that you had this this state of like automation going on. Oh, yeah. OK, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I automated everything, man. I got sick and tired of doing it manually. I mean, I used to talk, it used to take me hours and hours. And one time when I returned from backpacking around New Zealand for several months, I came back and I had like the biggest change log in the world. And it took me hours. I was like, I'm never doing this again. So yeah. I started writing bits of script to, and then eventually it just evolved to the point where you see it now, where it's still buggy, but it's better. So what you should do, just to, to remove those two packages from the list. I assume they've been added for something because Patrick never adds anything unless there's a reason for it. So from um, the change log? Yeah. So I'd be it could be that those packages aren't, that they're, they're dependencies, but they're not actual hard dependencies. So I said he only adds things if they're required for something usually, or someone's <laughs> someone's managed to sweet talk him into adding them in. But um, uh, just 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 take them out of the build list for the time being. Okay, I did that. We just have lib proxy and okay, so you can add them in. But yeah, just try this for the time being. But then because what it, it could be, I mean, as I said, I haven't looked into any of this stuff since I stopped um, working on it, but. It could also be that those packages do you'll need to rebuild the entire batch with those packages added because it could be that some one of the packages in the batch. well it, it most likely is the case that one of the packages in the batch when they were added um it'll build without those two packages but with those packages absent the support the, the python by um what do you call them bindings or whatever won't yeah. be present in the packages which which they should be going forwards so it builds anyway, but it really should be there and build with the Python bindings, is my guess. I'd say. So yeah, just try. Um, so what you need to do is just save that, save the build list, and then you'll probably need to do R two B dash capital F because when R two B fails like that, I it's still got a bug in it where it doesn't reset the state even though it's not running anymore. I mean, okay. yeah. The way it tells you if it thinks R two B is still running, it'll just bail out, and you have to use dash F to clear the state. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I never fixed that bug. But then you love it as well. The, so this this thing here, where I've got it to the point where you can, it'll handle pretty much any, I think any major upgrade with libraries by just copying them into the user local lib directory. And then, so they're, they're still hanging around while the build works and then it removes them afterwards. So you don't need to, because what would happen is when, you, when you'd upgrade to a major library, some of the core system um, packages would break because you'd kind of remove that because the way the arm build system works is that in most cases it removes the existing package from the os because because of legacy reasons and i generally think it's a good idea because otherwise sometimes things don't get recompiled when they should and whatnot so yeah, it, it moves them all in there to allow the build passes to work and then it removes them afterwards so you can then um you can do a system do, do you know about the um system test as well you can run there's an r2 if you run r2b dash dash help I'm not sure you can run R2B when it's still running with dash dash help. I've never tried actually, but there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a there's an option I think called dash dash s, and uh, it uh, runs the system um, integration test for the um, basically just make sure that all of the libraries are linked, which is oh, what so I tend to do. Is that in the distro tools directory, or is that in part of the tools already? It's part. It should be in there somewhere. It's called. <laughs> it's called uh, find what needs recompiling. So R two B just runs find what reads find what needs. Don't run it now though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, but it's just going to hammer your system to bet, and there's no point. Um, so it, yeah, R two B just runs that, but you can do also do it manually. It's not like a. Yeah. No. Hang on. Well, loads of stuff. Here. It says it's rebuilding the entire list, but. Yeah. 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 The years. Okay, so yeah, so the KD soap is built now. So you might see lib proxy may just build now if if, if it was dependent on lib. Oh, it didn't. Okay. 
something well, about that dot. Doesn't doesn't contain a C make list file. So yeah, okay. Maybe they changed to some other build system or you did merge in the differences, right? <laughs> you know, I did, I think. <laughs> I'm I'm right. reading the code as I go. I'm not really sure what everything does, so I could have skipped something. But Okay. So what okay. So it's most likely that so, so okay. So when that happens, sometimes unless unless it's obvious to me what I've done wrong, I just go into the I just go into the Slackware sixty four tree and then just run the run the original Slack build from there. Because if that fails, then I've got a different problem to if it works. Because then if it works, I know something that's just not been merged into the ARM tree properly. And if it doesn't work, then I've got a different kind of problem to figure out. Uh, so yeah, go into libproxy, just run libproxy.slack build, see what it does. Oh, and don't run things with SH either because the... Oh, it changes the shell, yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't, I mean, well, it probably doesn't matter for, for Patrick's build script, but the ARM build scripts, you'll, you won't, it won't let you... Um, um, it won't, I don't think it, if you run it, if you call the shell as SH, it doesn't allow you to use the bash um, extensions, I think. If I remember right. Uh, okay. I think that's. Oh yeah, that's better than before. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So it's something you haven't merged. You haven't merged a. Um, you haven't merged a change in, from that build script into the ARM one. Uh, I don't know what you might not have done there, but that's what it is. I would have a look, but I don't have um Yeah. I don't have anything set up so I can't see what, what there's an origin there's a Oh actually that's not true. I do have I can I can uh, I can check my other machine. I think it has been merged in because I don't know. Actually I probably checked the uh the ARM build script, shouldn't I? Yeah, it failed again. The proxy. <laughs> okay. Uh, that yeah, that that won't be um, an ARM build script problem because um, you know it's an ARM build script. Uh, when I say ARM build script, I mean this script here, ARM slash the build script called in the ARM directory. Yeah. Uh, you know there's a failure there because the, the build log goes missing because it gets deleted. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know why it gets deleted. So anyway, yeah, it does. So it's it's actually <clears throat> when there's a build log, it's because the, the error is in the build log. So that means that the the the, the ARM libproxy Slack build script was. You can just type less, by the way. You don't need to run because less. Oh, I don't know. Less did that. It does in Slackware. Yeah, it has. Um, it's one of the. I think it's one of Patrick's additions to less pipe. Actually, it handles different uh, uh, compression. Um, types, uh, so you can just use less directly. I don't think it does on other, maybe on other Linux distros, but it does in Slackware. On Slack, oh, I'll have a look. So hang on a minute. Uh, was it Slackware? Oh yeah. Looks like there's a Mison build script in here. Arch. I thought I'd lost my Slackware A Arch sixty four tree. I couldn't find it for a moment. <laughs> Where is it gone? Right. It's been what is deleted. It? <laughs> hang on. Yeah, it has a Mason build script in here now. Mason dot build or Mason or whatever they call it. Oh yeah, okay, it's completely different. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when you run sud, okay, so, well, yeah. So this is an example of where it's not automated. You have to actually merge the changes in. So this one is uh, okay. So oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so it's made. It's in. It's an improvement actually from um, CMake. So it's been switched from CMake to Meson. Meson. I hate pronounce it. Yeah. So what I tend to do in these instances is, if you look at, do you have Slack here? Do, like, do what's in your in your root directory? Do you have a, a script called D, D dots? Probably don't actually, because it's probably one of my my build system things. Okay. I can just so, copy copy it from. Uh... Distro tools. 
Um, no, if you look in, if you look in, um, where is it? Is it in Slack Kit? The, yeah. So in Slack Kit, it has a script, a template called D dot Slack build, which is probably in user share Slack Kit actually, or Slack Dev rather. Oh yeah. So if you look at user slash user share Slack Dev slash D dot Slack build, that's the template. And what I normally do in these, when you, when you have a build system change like that, I just delete all of the other all of the old stuff and copy the mess on and copy my default from here so if you scroll yes. down that's that's how i do it so i just i just scroll down to where it says the mess on section and just copy that so this is a, this is only a template you can't this is an unrunnable script an yeah, no. right so yeah so i just copy that i, I mean oh, you copy the mess on section and yeah, the only reason I copy it is just because it, it has the it, the call outs to was well, two reasons. One of them is because I use three spaces and Patrick uses two. <laughs> I'm never going to switch to three, two, three spaces. Uh, when, you know, with, with the with the opera, with the command line operators, it's just the style I like. For, I don't know why. I don't know where I got that from. Anyway, and also because I use push D and pop D, you know, because rather than CD, but also because um, it it calls. In the event of failure, it calls these Slack kit functions fail config, fail make, and fail, fail install. So they get reported back to the build system. So that's why I use that. Not, not because okay. there's any not because there's any different. All of the, obviously all the configuration options you need to keep the same as what's in, in Slackware. I see. Yeah. So you need to just you need to do a diff. Oh, you've oh. So in the build system, is it which build system? Are you, oh, sorry, which source tree are you using here? Is it the the right side right? is is ARM sixty four. The one on the left is the Slack Dev D dot Slack build. So right, yeah. So which build system are you using? Though is it the pri oh, it's a private? I can see it in the script. Okay. Yeah, I I just so, work from that. <laughs> so, so you already ran sud update, but you didn't merge in the diff. So you've copied. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> You can't do that, right? Um, yeah. So basically, you just need to make strip. You, what what I do is when sud outputs the diff, you have to go and remit. You know, uh, merge the diff in manually. Oh, so okay, I see. Because I didn't do that, I skipped it. I think so. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you can, and it ends up breaking. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Uh, yeah, so you have to. Uh, so in this case, it's removed the CMake st um, stanza, or, or sort of, you know, um, and then. <laughs> so basically, there's quite a bit of work. There's there's quite a few changes in this one. Not 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 a lot, but. Yeah. And then, they, and, then you, and then that's not the only thing. Though, will that it? still be in the build directory, or will that be? Um, you do ls. It has it in a ridge here. Yeah, do dot. Just type dot slash differ, and so the thing is, Sud would have already copied it, so it won't be any difference. Yeah, so because you because you just because you didn't merge it in, Sud updates the, the dot orig file with the new version because it assumes you've merged in everything you wanted to. Yeah. So you'd have to do a diff. Oh, it's too late now. Actually, <laughs> you'd have to um. Diff the sixty four bit one and. You need. Uh, you need to read like diff. Well, you need to read diff. The lib proxy dot slack build dot orig against or rather you need to read you need to grab the original oh the the one that I pushed out last you need to diff that against the that oh you can't because you you need to resync the private tree basically and then re diff the lib dot lib proxy dot slack build dot orig from there against the one that's in slackware sixty four current. And then okay. you'll see what it is. It's actually, it's not a lot. It's mostly just the mess on change and then commenting a few things out and changing the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, the documentation. So just a couple of changes. And then something to do with the change log.md and whatever. So, yeah, no big deal. And then it says there's some stuff about compressing a man page, but you don't need to worry about that because Slack Kit takes care of all of that stuff anyway. And that's about it, really. Yeah, that's it. And then that that would build. Okay, I'm going to exclude the change log because I don't want to overwrite it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that should do it.
Yeah. So, but that was the only one that. So, so yeah, that's the only one that currently doesn't build. Then, so that's. Um, Looks like I haven't synced it in a while. I guess. Uh, I guess. Oh no! So, I yeah. see what it's doing. It's deleting the stuff I built already. Yeah, so. it is. Yeah. Why is there a kernel firmware update in there? Is there? I don't know. <laughs> oh God. Is it okay to just like is uh, control C out of the RTB? Is that gonna cause problems? Hey, you're not in RTB, are you? This, I think this shell is. This is what. Just do um. So normally I run RTB yeah. at, under screen. That's what was running in there. Because it was running while I was the ID ran the rsync. No, you can you can just no you can just start control C. It's fine. It'll just abort the process, but uh, it'll 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 leave. Um, you just have to run RTB dash F again to clear the state, so it, to force it to build. Yeah, you muted. Did you mute me so you didn't hear anything? <laughs> <laughs> That was an accident. This keyboard has strange hotkeys. Oh, OK. Um, I was just saying you can, yeah, you can just abort control C, it's fine. And you can just use RTB dash F to re, um, uh, which got it to, uh, to, to make it run again once you're ready. Yeah, I just have to wait for this to download. You can see how slow my network connection is. Hmm. <laughs> that is a bit slow, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I spoke to Darren recently. Da Darren Austin, Taji, who runs the Slackware yeah. UK service. And he said that he's got the um, um, the server there is going to is going to be upgraded. The Slackware.uk mirror service is going to be upgraded to a 10 gig um, connection soon. Man, like, too bad I have a DSL connection. <laughs> <laughs> It's because the, the owner of the apartment complex doesn't want to pay the money to upgrade uh, all the DSL lines in the buildings to even just like cable. <laughs> even though I've watched Comcast or Xfinity comes through and they've been installing fiber lines all up and down the main street. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping the guy will do it someday, but. Oh, OK. Is that, oh, right, right. I don't know how it works with those. I don't know how it works with those things here either. Here, they 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 just um, so it's a different um, company owns the um, sort of uh, sort of physical. Well, it depends really on where you are, but yeah. the company owns the physical um, lines, and then other providers like mine use them and provide you service over them. So it's more yeah. like an infrastructure as a service type of thing, and then oh no, it's probably platform. At least line, basically. But, oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, yeah, that's right. You lease the line through your provider, and then they lease it off the people who actually run the physical stuff. Yeah, but okay. they don't want to pay to dig and rewire stuff. So. Well, yeah. I don't well, know. They, don't blame them. They're kind of <laughs> behind. <laughs> yeah. You um, yeah. I mean, I I mean, yeah. When before I upgraded to fiber here, the yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what I got. It was about twenty megs a second, even though it was supposed to be forty megs DSL. Something like that. Forty-five. Oh, it was fiber to the what? What we had was called fiber to the cabinet. So you had fiber from the exchange to a cabinet on the street, and then fiber from the no, sorry, then copper aluminium in my case from the street cabinet to your premises and so you kind of the only the only way you'd possibly get decent speed was if you lived really close to the street cabinet yeah this then, these are these apartments are right on the street the main okay. street so maybe you should get out there brent in the, in the dead of night digging your own <laughs> yeah right well when my parents uh built their house like 10 years ago i told them make sure you leave a pvc pipe you know, oh. underneath the driveway so that you can put in fiber and and sure enough they have that now so <laughs> like the they rewired the house a little bit but oh, the only the problem same. is they have ethernet they don't have fiber lines in the house so i don't know but they don't oh. want to pay for it 
as long as they left a piece of string in there or something like that so they can uh, yeah yeah when it when yeah, i had fiber here the, the, the guys turned up to to install the fiber and uh and it, and I said, oh, can you, because they were going to, they were going to install this fiber box on the exterior of the house. And I said, can you put it on the inside Yeah. in the, in the, in, in my, in my loft, in the attic? And it's like, oh, we don't install it into attics. And I said, well, can you install it into my attic? <laughs> it's yeah, like, right. it's like, oh, we know, because I said, well, look, I said, you know. <laughs> they didn't want to deal with well, the problem. That's all. <laughs> he said, oh, well, you see, because, oh, well, you know, if, if there's a problem with it. Yeah, I guess if there's a problem with it, you'll need to be at home to, uh, to, to like, let people in. I went, that's not a problem. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, I don't know, we don't. I said, it's fully boarded and lit. It's almost like, a, it's like, it's almost like a separate living space. And he's like, and I said, don't worry, there aren't any spiders in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not like they're trying not to fall through the ceiling or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I let him up in to have a look. He goes, oh, all right, then. That's fine. <laughs> so he just walked along and did it all, and that was fine. And then, and then I've got it exactly where I want it. But, um, yeah. yeah, I had to I had to push to get it not installed on the outside. And then, as it turns out, my next-door neighbor has exactly the same setup as me now. So I guess they just copied what I did. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> God, this is going to take ages, Brent. I know. That's what happens. <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, I've got stuff to do. It's just replacing all the stuff it built. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't build it all again now. <laughs> it's okay. I'm learning how to use this. That's the whole point. So. Yeah, but you definitely, you, you, um, you can't get away with not merging the changes in. Um, so. Uh, no, you can't do that, I guess. You just build stuff for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you'll have to... Um, well, you can run SUD again now. You can run... Oh, yes, because you're updating the build tree. Yeah, so you can, you can run it again and see what it does. And this time you'll see the... Um, the... Uh, uh, the diffs again. Oh, is that a new version of QT? Oh, no, it's the old version of QT. Well, at least QT only takes what, like an hour and a half, I think, with or at least with forty-four cores. Oh, Any I gotta put update. Do oh, don't do it. Yes, it hasn't finished downloading yet. Oh, you said to run it. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I did, but I didn't mean now. I meant when it's finished. <laughs> when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, then I'd have to download it all over again. Do it. <laughs> oh God. My goodness. Okay. Yeah, no, I was like. We're not doing anything. I might as well learn how to use this finally. And I started reading all the code to everything, uh, but I missed the part about the merging. So, all right, you don't want to read the just code. the whole point of it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, um, maybe in the future, I can sort of, you know, uh, I can, you know, kind of. Um, Sort of uh, to do an API call out to chat to, to, to see where chat GPT and say merge these things together and spit out a new build script <laughs> and it just yeah, takes right. care of everything <laughs> and we never need to do anything again, Brent. We just go and do something else with our lives. Yeah, like, I don't know shit. if uh, the honeycomb has any uh, AI chip in it, but you could do that locally with a program <laughs> instead of chat GPT. If that no. makes sense. No, it doesn't. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> you write your own AI to do it, just on your network. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I might someone write some was, AI. Someone in, posted in about that on the uh, forums for software. Oh, um, I did see that actually when I was uh, was it a few weeks ago. Some like local, uh, yeah. But but surely the whole point of AI is that you need a ton of machines to make it work. Yeah. Or at least in any reasonable time frame, I guess, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. You can get a little orange pie <laughs> and have it. <laughs> what, a 32-bit orange pie? Or you mean the, yeah, uh, yeah. We can, we can use that one I told you about, the uh, R1 or whatever, orange pie R1. <laughs> it has 256 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> 256 yeah. megabytes. Yeah, I got it a long time ago. Oh, right. Um, God. And it actually works as a router pretty well. It just gets kind of hot. But oh, okay. Oh, I suppose it could do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose it could do, couldn't it? Well, I mean, the, the, the open W, what's it called? The Linksys 
I oh yeah, what Open what WRT. Yeah. I yeah, use I used that on mine, and, and that's an ARM box, yeah. uh, an ARM, ARM, ARM machine, and it um, has quite a limited amount of RAM. So all right. So if you look, if you do sud dash p for peruse mode, and that will show you that will walk. That's dry run mode. So that will show you the changes, but won't make any changes. So sometimes if I what I would do is if if there was an update and there were a number of like, oh, you need to put, oh, oh yeah, it's okay. So go back to the open the change log again. Oh, I see. It's okay because you you save the change log hopefully from being over. Yeah, yeah. Assuming your R sync it worked. Yeah. So if you replace R two B with SUD, there's two of them, so you need to replace the top oh. and the bottom. Top and the or the, uh, is that right? Yeah. So you place. Yeah, that's right. Put star star sud. Right, and then do sud dash p, and then it will show you the differences. So what I what I would do if there were a large batch of updates like this, perhaps, and I I was short on time, I would run sud dash p to see the extent of the changes. And if there were one, if there were changes that were say more than a couple of paste, you know, a couple of lines, like maybe like a massive <laughs> build script change then I wouldn't run the batch. So I just leave it till another time. So you just press yeah. Q and it doesn't do anything. And then it just walks through those over and over. Yeah, I checked out uh, Peru's or whatever oh, yesterday, okay. but I didn't understand how, what, like what I was working uh, with the update switch. Okay, all of this stuff here, this is unnecessary. This is um, absolutely ancient build script stuff from, a long time ago so none, none of this stuff or even well yeah i mean you don't there's nothing to do there there's nothing to merge in at all there yeah it just shows you what is going to change i mean no it doesn't it shows you what has changed it doesn't show because oh, doesn't doesn't, yeah. well it just should, so it does show you what it changes but only it shows you it shows you the not in peruse mode but when when it's running in update mode it shows you the before so, it, so for example, in this case, there's nothing that you need to do because the only difference is a build script number, um, yeah. and it, it takes care of the build script number updates automatically, so you don't do anything. But in update mode, it, it'll show you the diff, and then you need to decide whether you need to merge any anything. You need, you need to take care of that diff manually or not, and then you put, when, once you've once you've merged the diff in manually then you can press q and then it'll do a final diff. it'll do a diff between the the new the new states that you've just saved and the previous state before you edited it okay and it does that by just copying the arm source directory into slash tmp or something like that and just running diff dash urn on it that's all it does it's nothing oh, special oh here we go look, this is so this is the part you skipped out look <laughs> yeah. so here's the here's the diff you should have made <laughs> copy and paste it basically <laughs> yeah uh well you need to yeah so basically you need to go into the build script rip out all of the cmake stuff and then replace it with the new mess on stuff oh, just delete it i have to rip it out <laughs> you gotta rip it out and then uh yeah and then and then you'd have to um well the the, the changes around the um compression of the man pages you don't need to do any of that because the yeah, slack takes care of all of that business anyway um yeah that's it basically i just gotta uh, put that in there instead of what i did and yeah and then it will build and then the whole thing will build cool there you go <laughs> and then yeah as i said then you'd have to add those two packages the two new ones that um alien bob added and then uh, rebuild the whole lot again to add any Python bindings or whatever those packages are actually for. I don't know. And, and, oh, and that change logs that change the, the the change where it says the change log. So all that actually you need to do is in the in the in the Slackware ARM build script is just change the file name because we've got a there's a function called Slack liposuction or something like that. <laughs> oh. And oh, and then and change the readme log the 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 um, package documentation as well. Mm. But you don't have to do that. Well, so this is the time where differ in this directory will work, right? Yeah, exactly. So so all R2B does, or rather SUD does, is, is run the differ script. Yeah, that's all it does. And just dumps mm -hmm. it into most so you can view it in, in a pad, pad, paginated way. 
yeah that's all that's literally all it does yeah oh well that's very helpful i mean okay. i've written tons of slack builds it's just getting it to integrate into the build system for arm is a different thing entirely so yeah i mean yeah the yeah the, the arm build system is kind of easier in some respects it depends what you're doing though sometimes it's more yeah. difficult <laughs> particularly when you're when you're port, when you're bootstrapping a new port from scratch the arm build system is not actually the most useful build system oh, God. <laughs> so for example for 64 bit arm but ar64 i actually went to the, i actually used the art the 64 x86 build system for some of the packages because it's easier because they're set they're standalone and then i switched to the arm build system so i got all the basic stuff done using um uh yeah using well I actually cross compiled some of it so uh yeah and then and then use the slackware once because it's easier and then you switch back to the arm build system because then it takes care of everything and i don't need to uh to do yeah. it it depends what state but oh, yeah for me it's the arm build system is kind of easier because then because then when you have things like fixing a package you're fixing up man pages and whatnot i just don't i don't my scripts take care of everything so i don't need to do anything but okay yeah. so This is where I paste stuff in, you say? Yeah. Yeah, this is where you um, slice and dice the uh, the build script. Do a bit of cutting, do a bit of pasting, do a bit of saving. <laughs> you're like, you're like, uh, you're like Neo in the Matrix, just wah, ch -ch <laughs> chop, chop, chop. <laughs> God. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in so long. <laughs> no, I watched it um, recently, actually. My kids wanted to watch it. So we watched it. And um, my oldest daughter, she's like, she's really intellectual. She's like, yeah, but what about? <laughs> she's like, what, well, I don't understand. How is it this and that and this and that? And how does that? Matter? But if, well, it's like, yeah, it's just a movie. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> is that the gist of it right there? Oh, no, I just copied the same thing. What the hell? <laughs> copied the wrong part. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then in this case, all I do is I, all I do is I just fix the uh, indentation to make it three rather than two, but, and then I just replace exit one with either fail config, fail make and fail install. That's kind of it really, pretty straightforward. Um, the only other time that's, that this is different. So in the case of Meson and I think, and also CMake, I just, there's nothing to change at all. I just copy that. But with autoconf, it has, it has like dash dash, host or dash dash build equals dollar arc slackware linux or whatever it says so that i think that's the, that, that's the only place where i have to change it for arm you have to use a different variable that contains the arm tool chain name but this this oh. isn't so it doesn't matter looks like this doesn't even need to be here yeah that's commented out sometimes i just delete the comment if it, that kind of stuff's commented out well i just delete right. it because if patrick ever re-adds it then i'll add it that's how i do it yeah and if you likewise if you uncomment it i'll just add it back in and if he deletes it i don't yes that's right so in the future if that ever gets deleted those commented lines i do nothing because it's not in there <laughs> so it's yeah it's less work later on less work for, yeah exactly less work for me and then you just change the comp you change the documentation at the bottom there to include the new the new um documentation files and then change oh, okay, that i see and then yeah. that where it says lipo section, you change that from change to it to change log dot md. I think it it says now. Where's the lipo section? This what is this it right here? Yeah, I think it says change log dot md. No, 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 no. The, the oh. usually, um, yeah, that's right. The function name. <laughs> yeah. God. Who's which script is this one? Yeah, is it some, it's, I don't know, some, it's, it's something like that. You have to look at the diff. But you've left all the plus signs. Tell me in a minute. <laughs> hey? It complains when something's wrong, right? <laughs> Things will break if it doesn't work. But you've also left, you've left the plus symbols in the Meson build mm, config. Yes, I see that now. Yeah, yeah. So, Cordio. And there's probably some other stuff. But yeah, that's basically what I do. So, you you know, in most cases, it's just either do nothing and just and press Q, and it'll and so it'll take care of the build number, or you have to merge in updates like this. That's it, really. Okay. Well, this will save me a lot of time, and uh, get to learn. Is there a way yeah. to quit?
I've quit out of peruse. Oh yeah, you're in peruse mode. I forgot about that. So when you go yeah. to um, so okay, yeah. So when you go to set update, obviously you've already made the change, so you don't need to do anything. You just quit out of it. Trying to, but it's not letting me quit. It wants to peruse a lot. <laughs> yeah. So just just do Control Z, and then do Kill Dash Nine Space Percent. Oh, there's some change. Oh. So you need to look at the yeah okay well you you, you get the idea now so just do yeah kill dash nine percent that's it press return and it'll kill off there you go and then you can run sud dash u and then it'll run it in update mode all right there you go right I've got to, I've got stuff to get on with Brent so um but that that that's that will uh, take care of that for you and it will build then yeah thanks all right should be, should be good cool all right time Cheers, to watch dude. some Gordon Ramsay again. All right. <laughs> yeah, I did enjoy watching those as well. There's like a million episodes. Yeah, they they, they are good, particularly the uh, the British versions. Those are the most funny ones. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. See you next time. All right, later. Bye. Bye.